Hey everybody, welcome back here to Anderson's TV and our ESP Takeover Weekend. We are now going over to a Q&A with Pat and Jamie, and they are talking to Mini Petrosa. So guys, please take it away. Hey guys, it's Pat Heath and Jamie Hunt for our Anderton's Takeover Weekend for ESP Guitars and we are with the heavyweight that is Mille Petroza from Creator. How are you doing, Mille? I'm doing very well. How about hey. you? Yeah, not too bad. 
not too bad. We just uh, wanted to really talk to you today about um, your your love of guitars and your your lifetime and career time of playing um, guitar and really sort of why now you choose to play ESP guitars. What is it about the brand that make you makes you uh, pick them? I was uh, I was aware of ESP since many many years and um, um, I always liked what they were doing, um, especially with heavy when you play heavy music like I do. So mm -hmm. to me, um, it was only a matter of time uh, until I joined the team, so to speak, and um, um, I, I I started like. I had a couple of ASPs before, and um, when they asked me to 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 um, become an endorsee, I was really really flattered. And um, we we uh, developed my uh, signature model, and um, now we're working on the second one. So um, I think ASP guitars are especially when you play live and and you travel a lot, like I do. It those those are the kind of the guitars that are really behaving well. They really stay in tune especially when you have to play in uh, in a in a in a um environment that where the temperature is always changing so they really stay in tune very solid very reliable instruments excellent so coming back to your signature guitar what kind of things did you ask for to make your guitar unique um basically to me it was a a matter of um i have to feel like i'm me and the instrument is uh, are becoming one, so to speak. It's uh, I, I, when I go on stage, I don't want to think about how the guitar um, behaves and how it, it has to feel like I'm, it has to like, almost like a natural symbiosis. So like, like, like me and the guitar become one um, in order to express my emotions and my, my feelings through the guitar and through the music. And, um, so we 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 I, I was really um, I I like the V shape especially for life, and we were developing um, uh, a guitar in that shape, and and, and the, the pickups were important. The the, the, the I, I used the whammy bar a lot. So I'm a very when it comes to um, life instruments, I'm very um, easy to please. I need a guitar that like kind of kind of reacts the way I needed to react, especially with the feedback and, um, but still has the distortion and, and the, 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 the very extreme raw distorted sound that I need to play creator songs. Excellent. So with that in mind, do you have a specific guitar you use? Do you use anything different for recording live? Recording to live? Yes, yes, I do. Um, and that's the, that's the next step that we're um, taking with ESP. Um, I always, um, in a live situation, most of the times I play a V shape. So my MK is the V shape, the old signature model. And we're working on a new signature model that has a, a less power shape, the Eclipse. And so that will be used mainly in the studio, but also live. Um, we're working on that at the, uh, as we speak. And um, it's going to, I think it's going to be great because um, that way I have the exact same settings. But when, when I play sitting down, I prefer yeah. the, 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 the um, less Paul mm -hmm. shape. Um, and um, I always, uh, I have a couple of, of um, Eclipse shapes and um, that those were the ones that I used in the studio. Sometimes I would add like the um, uh, Evertune to it and um, just to get more, uh, Get the get, keep the guitar in tune when I'm in the studio, um, but the, the the one that I'm working on on at the moment can be used in a live setting and also in a in a um, in a studio setting. It's gonna have the um, the Kaler for my for my signature, and I think the ones that you can uh, purchase are, are gonna be ones with the um, with the um, Floyd Rose tremolo. Excellent stuff. So. Obviously, you've talked about a lot about how the guitars serve the music that you write and your your riffs and the songs that you've written with Creator have been hugely influential to different generations of guitar player. So what advice would you give to up and coming metal guitar players? What do they need to think about or kind of focus on to be a good metal guitar player? 
That's a good question. I I would say that it's most most mostly important to to create. Of course, you can also always be influenced, and you can always like like um, see what other people are doing. Especially when you start up, it's it's essential to in order to um, to to kind of develop your own style and your own tone. Um, I did that, and I think many many most guitar players kind of look for for a certain um certain people or look up to certain people and and um, learn the tricks and uh, the basics but um i think once you took that step um you should try to at least develop your own style and um that can be your own tone because you're you, you don't play like other people or your pickings or the sound that you, you you're trying to create and it's it's um something unique you have to i think you should you should try to develop something unique mm -hmm. and um that's my advice um don't try to become the next steve Vai or the next um whoever you you you, you think is a great guitar player but try to be yourself sure which is which is uh, because there's no one there's no one there yet that plays like yeah. you you know yeah, absolutely and you'll have the best ideas that represent you and your take on things and your life experiences so yeah i guess follow your own ambition and your, your own sounds and quirks and bring that into your music As, exactly it's it's not it's not about like becoming perfect there's no perf perfection in my opinion of course there is but to me it becomes boring as soon as i hear somebody being too perfect i lose interest so to me it's it's uh it's um I prefer like imperfection to to um, like boring perfection. Sure, and I guess that's an interesting thing with how kind of recording processes have evolved over the years as well. It's it's so easy to kind of tweak and fine tune and put things where they should be and all the rest of it. That I think there's a a departure from bands sound like bands to some extent of just kind of going in a room and playing, and that's that's the sound of the music that you make rather than kind of production yeah, that's that's like you see i'm old, old school right when we started to record demos back in the day and we would have a boom box in the in, in the rehearsal room nowadays people have like settings that you can use as an album almost you, know? <laughs> like, yeah, of course. you have all the um the 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 um the great um uh equipment to to um go straight from the rehearsal into out to the world. I mean, there's. I know. I know people that um, where the quality of re recording becomes so good that you could potentially release it as an album. But um, I think, like you said, there's a certain dynamic and a certain. I use the word now magic um, that happens when four people get yeah. together in a room and and play together. And that's that's something that you cannot recreate on on a computer. Um, I mean, you can capture with the equipment and the modern day equipment. I'm not against that at all. I use it all the time uh, nowadays, of course. But I think the, 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 there's this energy that, that can be created. Um, having four people in one room and playing together, mm -hmm. making music together is um, something that can be very unique and something that cannot that you cannot fake with... Okay, you know what? The drummer sucks, so let's just program all the drums. You know, <laughs> uh, of course you can do it, but it's not going to be the same. No, of course. The chemistry, isn't it? Absolutely, it's the yeah. chemistry. And it's 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 this this um you know like like all the classic bands um listen to some old whatever Deep Purple or Iron Maiden records, mm. they're not perfect, but they're amazing. The yeah, personality absolutely. and you can hear the room and you absolutely. can hear the producer absolutely. and the players and absolutely absolutely rather than plugins absolutely and i i'm not, like i said i'm not against plugins i think it's important to use modern day technology i think it's uh it can help a lot but um creating this certain vibe i think it can help also to get together actually as a band yeah. cool yeah excellent so when you have some like let's say private personal guitar time People we call it practice. Is that something that you would do? Would you sit down and practice, or would you write music, or what? What, what would you do when you pick it up when you're on your own? 
Um, usually I, I pick my, my guitar to in order to write new riffs. Um, okay. I'm not like the kind of person that practices uh, in the in the in the in the uh, traditional style, like go sit down and uh, put on a click track and um, and uh, learn some 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 uh, scales or whatever. I never did that. I should have maybe, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> But I haven't. So uh, every time I pick up the guitar, to me, it's a, it's a tool in order to come up with new stuff. Excellent. Excellent. But with that idea of new stuff, um, what can creator fans look forward to as the world starts to open up again and kind of think about what a life without COVID might be like again, or when it's under control at least? Uh, any plans for creator that uh, fans can look forward to? Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll play the Bloodstock. That's Amazing. not cancelled yet. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It could, it could happen, and I'm, 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 I'm hoping. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this is going to happen. You know, because yeah. it would be the kickoff for a life after COVID, maybe. You know, yeah, exciting times, especially in the metal world, being such an important um, festival, and for the first time ever, we headline the 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 yeah. festival, and it would be to me that would be the perfect. Um, End COVID statement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a new start, yeah. Um, yeah. Going to Bloodstock and blow everybody away and wake everybody back up um, yeah. um, to to go to 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 keep um, to reawake music, so to speak. Mm. Reawake yeah, yeah. metal and reawake uh, the 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 beauty of of going to a festival and 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 and, and, and waking people up again. Okay, now we we leave that behind us, and now yeah. in, in the future. There's going to be more festivals. It's going to be life after COVID. I, I think that's uh, that's also a statement of hope. And I think it's it's it seems realistic at this point. And I hope it's going yeah, to lovely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. fingers crossed. Absolutely. Excellent stuff. Excellent. So, well, when you're out on the road and you're touring, where, where where's the worst place you've ever? The worst place. The worst place you've ever had to sleep. <laughs> um, I think that was an on a on a. There was, uh, there's been some edgy places. I, I can sleep anywhere. I can sleep on the plane. I can sleep sitting down. I can sleep um, on the floor at some, like I've, I've seen it all really. I mean, we've been touring since the eighties. So that means um, late eighties, but um, the, the very first tours that we did in the US, we would sleep at people's houses sometimes. And um, it wasn't um, always like, like like luxurious but it was always great to to meet new people so i i'd say i've slept in all kinds of bad places but i've also slept in some nice places and um um one uh, one thing that comes to mind is the last time we started the tour in the us and i had to sleep at the airport um underneath a an air condition so next morning i woke up and i had such a horrible um cold and that I, the first couple of days i was i had to take chemicals and, 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 and medication to get rid of it and that's sometimes something that you cannot control you have to people always tend to think um that I'm, some people might think that being on the tour oh it's always like you know, you sleep in nice hotels and you sleep on a, on a, on a luxurious, um, on, a, on a nice, in a nice tour bus, which is mostly true, but sometimes you sleep wherever you can. And uh, so I'd say that I don't care when I'm, when I'm out, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. I don't care where. Just avoid the air conditioning, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, sleeping underneath one. What do you expect waking up? <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned then. <laughs> so um, when you're on tour, obviously you're, you've done some hectic full-on tour schedules over the years. Uh, what do you tend to do when you get a rest day? What do you like to do to uh, depart from all that when you get some time in a different country? Usually I, I try to recover uh, physically. Um, I, I don't party on a day off. I can because there's always a next day. Uh, I cannot party hard like I used to. I, I, that might be a, might come with age, I guess. Um, but um, I'm I'm mostly recovering. I'm doing you know on a, on a tour um, day off. I'm doing nothing. Mm -hmm. 
or mm -hmm. I'm going to the to the to the to the swimming pool or I go to the sauna or to the gym, but that's about it. I, yeah. I don't even talk to people. The thing is, being a singer, um, you need to rest your voice also. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that that uh, uh, keeping that in mind, I usually on a day off, you won't even see me. Sure. So you get a proper rest, Absolutely. and I think it's um, it's important, isn't it? Because I think early days of touring, I was guilty of this that. You kind of get a day off and you see that as a party day and then you go back to do the shows the next day and you're more exhausted yeah. from the rest day than <laughs> just doing shows, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I've, I've been there, done it, and it's not like... I'm not saying it's never going to happen again, but I try to avoid it. So um, there's always like these these days where, you know, there's no, there's no rules on tour, but I try to... The, yeah. the older I get, the more I have to take care of my health. Yeah, you know, sure. because it's harder to recover. I, I just, you just have to face the facts. Yes. And, I, and I think it's today, nowadays, it's more, the most important thing, it's always been to me, the most important thing was always the music. And, mm -hmm. but when you're younger, you can, all, you can still play your music, you know, the, the 150% with having party the, the day before. But as yeah. you get older, <laughs> <laughs> You should you should be careful. Yeah, good advice. Yeah, cool. So, if you were Neo from the Matrix and you could plug in and have any technique that you wanted on guitar, it could be country or jazz or whatever. Is there anything that you would like to be able to do that you could like download? Into oh yeah, brain? well yeah. I mean, um, that's that's. I'm not I'm not such a big jazz fan, but I like the skills and I like watching people play jazz right. um, country. I, I wish I could be the guy that sits uh, uh, on the fire and sings country songs, you know, but yeah. uh, I'm not the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I might play some Ramon songs on, on the fire, right. but, but that's about it. But being able to be like a living jukebox. Uh, I had, we had this guy on tour with us, um, a, a roadie um, who would, you could tell, you could go to, throw a song at him and he would play it perfect right. and i'd like to have those, those skills would be fun that sounds really handy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially on acoustic guitars i'm not i, I kind of suck on acoustic guitar i have to admit it's a, it's a different art isn't it it's a bit of a mm. jedi art Absolutely. Absolutely. i can write stuff on acoustic guitars and i i especially for the on the next album and on, on some of our previous albums we had like some very nice pieces of acoustic music. yeah yeah um but um, I can write them, those parts, but I cannot play them. I, 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 fortunately, I have two amazing musicians in my band that can, whatever I come up with on an acoustic guitar, they can play perfect, so. Excellent. Give them, they get that work then. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You write it, they play it. Yeah, absolutely. When they, play better, they can play it better than I could ever play it. You know, that's, that's, oh. uh, that's um, a fact, but, um, yeah, maybe if I could uh, get to the metrics and get those skills, I would yeah. try to. I could also rehearse and, and learn, but I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So if you could play guitar, say you got the opportunity to play one set with any band from the past or from the present, metal, non-metal, any band, but for one set only, which act would you pick to play one show with? Um. I think it's a rom romantic thought if you think about it. Um, of course, I could say I, I could I, I want to play a show with Kiss or whatever in 1973 or 74, <laughs> um, and I kind of would like to do that. But I would be I pro would probably be very surprised of how how little they hear themselves on stage. If you think about the technique nowadays um, with in ear monitor systems and yeah. all that technology. Um, and the way things sounded mm -hmm. back in the day. I, I even remember when I started playing guitar, it was hard for me to find an amp that would sound the way I wanted to sound. I had to use like a lot of the, uh, they had marshals, but the marshals didn't have the um, built-in distortion yet. And I had, I, had, I had to always had to use a tube screamer and, and stuff like that. And it was hard to find the right amp even back then. And um, I think being in a uh, being in a time 
a capsule and, and, and a time machine and, and going back to the 70s or even the 60s playing with the Beatles or something. Um, sounds romantic and sounds amazing, but um, I, I think it would be very surprising of how much, how, how little they, they, they could hear themselves back then. Right. I read an interview of the Beatles ones um, where they said that sometimes the audience was louder than... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. And uh, we're talking 60s here and the PA systems weren't yeah. as, as yeah. powerful as they are nowadays. So I, I'd say going back, I would say play a show in a club with Kiss being whatever, Gene Simmons or whatever. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. Amazing. <laughs> really good answer. That's not epic. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Well, thanks so much for your time, Miller. It's been yeah. a, a top interview and you've shared some really re great insight. And um, I hope... You know, as we said, the world does open up and allow Creator to yeah. hit the stage and headline Bloodstock this year and other great things to follow after that. Yeah, Absolutely. we'll see you there. Absolutely. Superb. Thank awesome. you. Thank you.